Hello everyone and welcome to the 2020 PCS Open. Life Dale, along with the Disc Golf Guy and our champion from 2019, Eagle McMahon here in Eagle. Disappointed we're not at Overos this year, but quite a card they've put together for our feature card here. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for thanks for having me on, Terry, and thanks for PCS wanting me on. And Overos, beautiful place, and as Terry's saying, got a, a star-stacked uh, feature card. So hole one is a par three, 124 meters, 406 feet. I mean, look at that. There's nowhere that I've been in the world that I've seen a whole one like that. Looking out over a fjord, you got the dramatic music, just absolutely breathtaking. And you see. <laughs> and in true fashion of enjoying themselves, it looks like we've got car quite a card from uh, left to right. Who do we have there? So from right to left, you got Knut, which is arguably one of the best players in Norway. Uh, Christopher Heview, who's actually on Game of Thrones. He's super famous. I think he'd probably take uh, take Brody's spot for most famous uh, disc golfer. Um, and then, uh, who else was it? I, I We've got Yaron, who we just uh, saw throw a moment ago. Of course, uh, head guy over at PCS. And then also Annika Steen. Annika Steen, yeah. I actually stayed with um, Annika and, or Anakin, uh, with... Um, her and her husband, it was uh, when I was in Norway, we, we stopped um, in Hamar, so, and they, they uh, housed us, which uh, uh, a really great uh, couple right there. Thanks for, thanks for 2019. Hope to see you guys soon. Uh, and now we're going to get some great looks. She's uh, left-handed, so I think she's the only lefty on the card, so it'd be good kind of get that righty-lefty combo. We know you love to throw plenty of forehands out there last year, but we'll, she, we'll see what she can do left-handed. So she rips one out of the gate right in a, you know, a great position. She's going to actually have an outside look for a two. So have we from Norge's best and best club, Ekeberg Sendeplade Club, Kristoffer Hebu. So here, here he is, Game of Thrones. Unfortunately, Terry nor I watch Game of Thrones, so we can't give him, you know, give him the justice he deserves. But he's a big deal. He's a big deal. And he's here and playing disc golf. He finds himself in bounds off the opening throw. We'll see. I mean, so much notoriety and fame that he has. But then can he bring some of those ways that he copes with pressure? And how does he feel when he comes onto the disc golf course? And we saw Yaron, who didn't go past the Mando in his opening shot. So he still had to go around it. You saw him pinched up against it. Christopher from probably... Uh, can't see the basket. Not, not too far, probably around uh, 120 feet. It looks like you just sawed it off left, out of bounds. Hole one somewhat, we'll say, interferes, or hole two kind of interferes with one, however you want to word that. They almost overlap in some regard, which doesn't seem to be a problem whenever we have the tee time starts out here like we do uh, for this big event. And I can. Probably trying to give it a run, but just comes up a little short. Yoran playing smart, just laying up. This is Christopher to try and save his bogey after going OB. What a beautiful backdrop. Great putt by Christopher. <laughs> he walks away with the bogey. and Now, Canute had a great finish here last year, but wasn't quite enough for uh, what you brought. Do you remember, how much do you remember of your rounds from last year? I really don't remember all that much. I think I shot around 27 under for the event. And I wanna say I won by around 20 strokes over <laughs> um, my teammate, also team captain, Avery Jenkins. Both of us would love to be at this this year's PCS Open, but unfortunately with the, you know, the, the global pandemic, that was not an option, but we're looking forward to uh, 2021 when it's a pro tour yeah you heard that right it's a disc golf pro tour event it's going to be the best players in the world playing at this course excited to check it out we're looking at 104 meters this is a really straightforward shot and uh maybe maybe a little uh, action off the left side that's a great kick for canute i i he was 
pretty out of position for a birdie. And now, I mean, he's looking right at it, probably, you know, a little bit more than 20 feet. That's the great roll. Now, if she gets this up and it hyzers out, she could go all the way down into the right side instead. She plays it up and high on the left side. She'll be looking downhill from there. Joran, rocking his famous PCS glasses. <laughs> he throws it outright, it's fading in. Uh, it looks like it gets caught up by a tree and sends it out of the bounds to the right. Christopher. So it seems like he's a, a primarily a standstill player. Yeah, you don't see a lot of run-up, at least in the first two shots or first two tee shots we've seen. I don't know if that's something he's still working on in his game and just trying to utilize all of his upper body. Solid approach right next to the pin. On again with a techie short approach shot. Gets knocked down by a tree, but I think she'll be within putting range. Yoran trying to give somewhat of a bid. Comes up short, hitting the pole. And what a beautiful green. We know that he got a little love from that left side to bring him down to that close. Like you said, 20, maybe 25 feet. Nice birdie. Yeah, I'm not sure if the, the pond right there is out of bounds. I remember in... 2019 when I was there it played as casual but I was not there so I do not know the rules oh Anakin just splashing out right getting most likely going to be getting a bogey yeah a little bit surprising to see this average 3.2 overall in terms of the total score so kind of surprised to see uh, just not lower scores on it I, I know it's relatively straightforward It seems like the weather here is pretty good. Uh, this this event is taking place a little bit later than it normally does. Um, and in Norway, it's so far north that at this time, you know, I think that they could be almost thinking about some snow. Like, but uh, it seems like, uh, you know, grass is still green. Colors are still green. So, you know, absolutely beautiful out here at the PCS. I'm not sure the drone does it justice. This plays considerably downhill. So at 314 feet, what kind of power are you really throwing here? Not not too much. Uh, Knut's probably throwing a, a chip Firebird or something along those lines on a forehand. It looks like he throws a little bit low. It gets knocked down. Caught up on that short left side. Seems like the high forehand shot was really the shot we saw quite a bit last year. We'll see if Knut makes any adjustments in subsequent rounds, possibly. Christopher trying to get something to Anheuser. It goes all the way down the hill. I think it will be inbounds. Sets up really well for a left-handed thrower. And I can get it in, out nice and wide, fading in. And that's inside the circle. You're no stranger to the lines out here. Just pulls that a little bit too far right, never giving it time to fade down the hill. Now a spot from down on the left where you don't see too many players, we'll say this short on the uh, shallow left side. So he's got a little work to do. You saw him right next to one of the other baskets. What a great approach though. Yeah. Looks like Joran pitching down. And it seems to have hyzered a bit too much. Canute will have a birdie opportunity. Long range. Making I think a, a smart play and just laying up. Yeah, and you got to be really careful what we saw from Neuron where he had just thrown it a little bit too high. So it's easy for it to get away from you because it slopes so far downhill. And that's something that Anakin has to be thinking about as well. She has to draw metal here. Because if she doesn't, she might find herself right next to where Yuran was. Oh, 
uh, just a little bit high, you know, not getting, uh, you know, the soft part of the chains, kicking her out. Christopher will be in for another par. Hole three, just like hole two, amazingly, averaged 3.2 in terms of the overall scoring. So kind of interesting to see two very different holes with the exact same average. And we're going to take a look at what we can find on hole number four. So hole number four is a par three, 105 meters, 344 feet. And it actually seems to maybe move back a little bit from uh, last year, or they built a new platform tee pad which I mean they just it's adding to the appeal of this course that the eye candy we'll see how it plays yeah it was in a uh, lower lying area about 20 feet closer to the pin previously but now you can see they've literally decked it out <laughs> so it looks really nice there yeah and that's that's not a small deck either they put a lot of work just from what I saw there you know really that's what the, that's what the PCS guys do you know the crew up there you know, they do an, an outstanding job on every single aspect of this tournament. And, you know, I can't say enough great things about it. So there's OB on the far right side all along the duration of this hole. The left, as you can see where Christopher went, uh, can be a little bit of trouble. But anything to the right is going to be OB. Anakin is going to have to push something straight, not get a kick. Seems like she stayed up on the left side fairway. She's going to need to pull out her scramble tricks from right there. See Yoran repping Avery Jenkins. The hat. It gets a oh. great kick back into the fairway. <laughs> he needed that world champ, 2009 world champ love there. Absolutely. So he's in really good position. That was a great kick back out. And it looks like he's going to make... Yeah, what a great approach. Trying to take full advantage of... The good kick that he got off the tee shot. A little patent pending action here. How often do you practice that shot and when you find yourself out of position? Or, or do you not practice it as much as maybe some others because you have such a solid forehand? I practice it whenever I need to throw it. <laughs> <laughs> so not enough, kids. Here's your pro tip. Go out and practice it. Christopher also on the left side. This is going to be somewhat downhill. Oh, oh, that looks very unfortunate. Hits a tree, redirected straight out of bounds. And now he's got to be worried about his hand and his follow through here as he's pinched inside those trees and just doesn't have a clean release for it. I think that's one of the short tees. Christopher from probably just outside the circle. Oh, giving it a good run. Just coming up short. Canute. The long look. Also a downward slope, but he draws good metal. And I'll keep throwing the stats at you guys. This actually came in averaging 3.8, so a difficult par 4 or correction, part three, as Yaron struggles. Just nine birdies were found on this hole during the opening round. Anakin here with the par. That was a good scramble by her. As you can see, Christopher has Team Innova on his on his back. He's on the Innova celebrity team. Yeah, Proving this... that over par can still be fun, even <laughs> as <Yeah>. he smiles. <laughs> from what I from what I understand, Christopher is a really good sport and just a, a lot of fun to be around. I saw I was looking at his Instagram and. He makes the most out of disc golf. Hole five, par three, 90 meters, 295 feet. This is a, it's a short but very technical hole. You have to navigate at early gap, but also 
there's out of bounds near the basket with elevation. So the shot here is to throw something straight to overstable that fades left and just gets above, not falling into the out of bounds. And Canute tried to do so, hits a tree, kicks left. At least he's safe. And this hole does not favor a lefty at all. We'll see if she comes up. She does come up short of the pond, like you were just mentioning. So I think she's in really good position to just really pitch up onto the elevated green there. Yeah, and what you saw was just Anakin kind of, you know, knowing her limits and playing the smart shot, putting herself in a really good spot to pitch, pitch up to the basket. And you can see that everyone's conscious of that pond because either they're, you know, uh, coming out really early and, and fall, finding themselves on the left side or just putting too much on it and pushing that hard right side. No clean shots here except for Anakin's. So it might have been a little bit of a mishap there for Knut. It didn't seem like he had all that much in the way and he just didn't give it enough to get to the basket. And that's a really good approach shot. Now you saw the structure in the background. They'll be on that in a few moments. That's probably where these t uh, where these camera angles are coming from. And that's OB uh, is the next T, which is a great place to stand and try and get the <laughs> the action here. That's why you're seeing those come in at such an, a unique angle. Anakin, long look at birdie. But she's going to be stress-free, and you know, uh, birdies are great, but a stress-free three when everyone else is struggling, that can feel just as good. Absolutely. Knut with a difficult putt for par right here, comes up short, and that's going to be his first bogey. Joran just can't catch a break right now. Almost the same distance for Christopher. See if he can show up the title sponsor. There it is. Nice par. And again for three. And we'll be moving on to hole number six. Just a brief walk, just literally a few feet over to be on top of this platform and. I don't think you can pick a better view in the world in disc golf. Well said, Terry. And I mean, it's a very unique hole, a man-made tee pad built up, thrown down 308 feet. And look at this triple Mando, throwing through two swords and a banner. It doesn't get more Norwegian, I don't think. <laughs> this is clearly one of the signature holes out here. I feel like there's a couple but when you look at this, it's just incredible. And that looks to be a little bit high. No, and it hits. It's the side of the sword. <laughs> How often do you say that in Disco Legal? Oh, hopefully there's not a, a slice <laughs> out of that one. The gates of Valhalla. Oh, he's going with the turnover that needs to push right and get down. <laughs> Seeing this right now makes me really sad that I had to miss this event. I mean, there, there's literally nothing like it. And Canute just, oh, it looked like he was going to be pure the whole way, but kicks off and then makes the Mando. So he's looking at a putt. If you make it through that Mando, you're definitely looking at a birdie opportunity. And if you come up short or you miss the Mando, you're going to be struggling a little bit. I think they did push the Mando back this year, or the drop zone, I should say. So it's not quite as tempting as it used to be. Yeah, this, this is an interesting hole. Just the fact, oh, wow. That would have been a great birdie for Joran to stop the bleeding of his round. But still, a lot, a lot of excitement there. Oh, and it looks like Christopher didn't miss the Mando. I was under the impression that he did. And he still had to go through the swords. Anakin, or no, this is Christopher. Yeah, Christopher now is, uh, Anakin had just approached. This is Christopher to try and save his par. And he's just going to lay that up. This really slopes downhill the entire way. So 
you have to be careful of the speed. You see the white stakes in the background do make up the backside OB. This is Canute for his birdie. Canute off the top. That would have been a great birdie for him to get, uh, you know, balance out the bogey from the previous hole. And so close to saving the par from way back at the drop zone, but Yaron walks away with the bogey. Anakin with the par. This averaged 3.5 for the, the weekend. So um, right in the middle of the field, so to speak, in difficulty. We move over to hole seven. And we're on to the, the, the first par four. Uh, 205 meters, 672 feet, out of bounds left and right. What I recall, the shot was throwing a pushing hyzer that you know put you somewhere in the fairway, and then you had a few different options. But ideally, let's say um, you're getting about 360 feet, 400 feet down the fairway, you're going to probably have a turnover or forehand approach into the green. And she's going to want to push this out. The, the more she stays out to the left, the easier her angle will be. But being left-handed is a huge advantage on this hole, isn't it? Yeah, Anakin with a booming drive. That was very impressive. A lot of snap, great technique there. Knut has big distance, and it looks like he played this very well. That's that's a good landing zone over there. That's going to open up the fairway for him. The closer you can push that left side, it looks like a little slip by you're on. The closer you push that left side without going OB, the better the position you're going to be in. Unfortunately, he uh, after that slip, it looked like he went way too far left. The trouble spot is tight to the right side trees that you're seeing in front of you. Christopher getting nose up, out of the hand, fading left, out of bounds. Let's see if he can get the nose down, get something penetrating down the fairway. And he does so. Good recovery shot by Christopher. Good release. You'll have to pitch up over the OB, we'll say uh, stream type area there to find himself on the green. You're on going for the hero shot. <laughs> yes. I'm not. I imagine he threw something pretty understable there. And we don't get an out of bounds graphic. But Ooh. it seems like it might have been pushing the right side. If so, that's going to be a lot of work to do from there now he's going this is a risky shot it is um yeah as you can see there's a good opening down the left side um but you know taking that the high route trying to get some of the spike down in is um you know it's risky but there's a high reward yeah he's going out and up and over the ob line that's between that was between him and the basket let's see what kind of turnover touch shot we get by christopher here out of the hand looks good I think that almost went in. That was a great shot by Christopher. What? Wow. <laughs> a little tree love right there. I'm sure that's not what she was looking for, but the, that was a great result. Yoran with, with throwing a little pancake right there. Yeah, getting a little tricky as well. Looks like Canute was well past the basket. Most likely tapping his par, though. Christopher hmm. seems like he had a little bit too much angle and ended up cut rolling a bit. <laughs> As he's, Iran is in for his bogey. Everyone just patiently standing around. <laughs> So hardcore disc golf fans may remember a big Avery Jenkins banner in the back of uh, of this hole. I think they relocated to even a more prominent spot uh, here in 2020. But hole number eight, I think they pushed this one back. Eagle, you went there and you put it right next to the pin, and they said, "Well, we got to make this even tougher." Apparently. Yeah, this was this was considered a par a par four from a different um, uh, tee pad where. You know, if you had big power, you could take a big hyzer and potentially park it for the eagle. 
Uh, so far what I see is a good change. It makes it a lot more technical and you actually have to navigate through the woods. So I believe uh, this is a good change to the hole. Yeah, this is about 120 feet longer than last year. So like you said, it's really a totally different look and you have to play up the fairway here that we're looking at right there. Last year, you kind of just powered over everything uh, from a shorter area. And it's really nice to see variety because you've you've seen uh, the holes we've played so far a little bit more open, and uh, now we're getting a taste of uh, you know a more technical uh, wooded section of the course. Yaron overturns it but kicks into the center of the fairway. Just an incredible shout out to all the work that these guys do. When we talk about someone having a backyard course, this is literally in their backyard as it hits a tree and pushes toward doesn't find the ob which is good but this course is in their backyard and they put their heart and soul into it throughout the entire year and next year being rewarded with hosting a disc golf pro tour event the first ever international disc golf pro tour event seems so fitting yeah i mean talking with avery you know going there in 2019 and seeing what i see on camera right now it shows that they really care. They take, uh, you know, they take uh, the criticism of the course very seriously, and they'll 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 do everything they can to make it better. So these are these are some uh, great guys out there who are are willing to listen and improve. And staying clean is Christopher's great approach shot. Joran oh, spices a gap. I, I believe that to be the best shot Joran's thrown all day so far. That was incredible. Exactly the angle, the speed that he wanted. We'll see how just just how close he got to the pin, but he hit the gap perfectly. Onikin, not really sure where that went. It seems like it went to the right side of the fairway from where she was at. And where the players are now, just to put it in perspective, I would say whole hole eights t hole sevens pin are, are really two of the the farthest points out on the course away from the clubhouse so to speak so we're really at the most outer edge of the course and we're going to slowly start working our way back christopher, christopher yeah. with a hundred foot or so any approach shot and we're seeing him throw right over the green that was where you played to last year uh, on that bottom left-hand side, you saw a pole, and that's exactly where the, the pin was last year. So it looks like they backed up the pin and backed up the tee to make this more, to eagle-proof it. <laughs> I believe it's a good call. <laughs> Cut Newt squeaking one in there for the birdie. That'll be good for him to get him going. Knut actually was planning to tour the U.S. earlier this year and unfortunately had to fly back home due to the pandemic. Hopefully we can have him back in the U.S. next year. Yeah, he was, I know, in Waco along with a number of other European players and uh, Joran. <laughs> Joran's having a, a really tough one right now. Just a bit short. Hole eight relinquished just 13 birdies and averaged 4.8. So this par four showing its teeth and proving just how tough it can be out here, averaging 4.8 in the new uh, tee and pin positions. As we take a look at hole nine. Hole nine, par three, 121 meters, 396 feet. Another move tee pad, which I believe the whole they definitely made it harder yet again. Uh, I, I like this look. It seems like the, they've made it so the gap plays lower and it requires a little bit more power to you know, get to the basket. Knut throwing a driver, trying to get around the corner with some speed and skip up. That's going to be right around circle one and you can 
uh, you can see that there is OB on this hole. So you really have to make a conscious decision of how much you're trying to put on it and where you want to position yourself because kind of that gray zone could put you in an OB situation. Anakin throws a great shot. This, this hole really doesn't shape up for a lefty, but she had that nice penetrating slight Anheuser to get her safe. Yorin needs a break right here. <laughs> Gets on to what... Or I can say probably an island green. Yeah, they he gets the skip there. Christopher gets a great move on this one. That was wow. big distance. Yeah, he got a full flight out of the disc. Well, that's why he took off his sweatshirt because <laughs> he was ready. He was he knew he needed a big pull, especially with a standstill. How incredible is that? That that's not part of his game that he's totally put together yet, and he's out there throwing pretty solid drives even just with the standstill. Yeah, a standstill is a is a great thing to do if you're not, you know, comfortable with your X step and you really just want to get, you know, the, the upper body technique down. So any new players watching, go out there, throw some standstills. You know, you might you might land a roll in Game of Thrones. <laughs> I don't know if that logic works out, <laughs> but apparently in Norway it does. And here's Knut looking at the last opportunity for Birdie in the card and just right side chain. Yeah, Canute has had uh, a few issues on the putting green. He did sneak one in on the last hole, but you know I'm sure he wanted to capitalize there. <laughs> and Yoran with the first par, shooting plus ten on the front nine. One worse than the amount of holes. I, I think he's ready to turn it up. I think I, he is. I think he is. And we're we're going to be playing twenty holes, so we've got one hole left here in the front half of this video. We appreciate you guys for tuning in, for watching the action. Appreciate everyone over at PCS and Eagle 748 feet. This uh, this is the second par four we're seeing, or third par four. This is a new hole. Uh, I don't, I didn't see the the graphic, but um, I'm trying to just watch the drone fly over here because I I've never been to this part of the course. But what it looks like is you know a fun, challenging par four, and. You know, let's let's see what these guys do because I don't I don't have much knowledge of this hole. Yeah, and you see the white stakes all along that right side. I'm I'm not sure how much OB is on the left side, but the white stakes on the right side do give you the out of bounds indicators. Knut seems to be throwing a fairway driver, most likely just flip up, glide straight, and I imagine that to be a good shot. And from where he's at seems like it'll be maybe a high spike hyzer into the into the basket. Anakin is pushing straight. It's nice and low. Anakin's doing very well right now. Only one bogey. You know, she's only she's only two back of Knut, which Knut is arguably one of the best players in Norway. So that's saying a lot for uh, Anakin's game. Playing that par of life, and that's going to stay inbounds with the skip. Christopher getting a good flex, but finds himself hitting a tree, and I didn't see it come down. Yeah, I, did, I didn't either. It looks like he's at least, I'm not sure if it stayed up or not, but he's playing it from right there. I wish I could understand what they were saying. <laughs> I'm sure there's uh, some okay. comedy involved. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's a urinal, universal <laughs> language right there. <laughs> Everybody loves the fist pump. We can all rally behind that. That's for sure. <laughs> Here's another patent pending stance. Not much of a run up for her. And what control? That was incredible. Anakin is is proving herself right here. I've I've never seen her play, but I, I'm thoroughly impressed right now. She's the way she puts the energy into the disc is is very impressive, and anybody could uh, find inspiration from you know that patent pending shot she just threw. And it looked like a little hesitation by Yaron to go from the backhand to the forehand. And I don't know why, because it looks like he executed that very well. 
Yeah, that had some that had some sauce on it. Christopher just trying to throw something straight up. And he lasted the gap he was trying to hit. Good shot by him there. And this is finally now Canute's second shot, correct? Yeah, it looks like he's gonna be running up in a puddle. And did I predict his next shot correctly? Big big high hyzer. Yeah, it looks like the question is how much of a run up is he gonna be able to take here and and is he at all concerned about his hand and that tree during his follow through? It doesn't look like he's looking at it. Knut is the master of uh, no follow through. So, you know, if there's any person to throw the shot, it's him. Kind of gets low. He's got a putt. Yeah, looked like a great shot. Duncan is going to be approaching the basket to save for par. This leaks a bit right. So as we continue to watch everyone, we wanna again thank you guys for tuning in, for joining us. We gotta thank the entire PCS crew just for the opportunity to be able to watch more disc golf. Oh, as you're on is short and tombstones that. Uh, leave in the comments, we'd like to know since Eagle and I are not up on our Game of Thrones references and lingo, we need to know if Christopher is in fact your favorite character or not, and how how he couldn't have won that, he should have won that spot, I should say, if he hasn't already. I mean, the fact that he's here playing disc golf with us is, I think, incredible. So leave in the comments uh, your favorite Game of Thrones character. He's definitely my new favorite. <laughs> I agree. And you not finding the center of the basket. Yoron, it's starting to heat up. We're, we're, we're calling it. <laughs> He's on a heater. He's got two pars in a row. This does come in as one of the most difficult holes on the course. Just six birdies as it averaged 5.4. And Eagle, super excited to see this front 10. I think we got a lot more golf to watch from the PCS Open, but looking forward to it. And uh, again, like, share, and subscribe, and leave us your favorite character. Beautiful look at Oveross Disc Golf Course. And there is your lead card, or your, I should say your leaders after the first 10 holes of the tournament. Beautiful. Frederick Weissip shooting three down at the top at the moment. And the majestic views out here in Vestnes, Norway. Eagle, looking forward to you joining me for the back 10. See you there. <laughs>